everything's all done. All the all the pins have been, uh, or brad nails have been inserted, and the arcs have been uh, lofted up with uh, the battens, and everything's ready to cut out. So I've taken and uh, removed most of the, uh, the weights. I'll keep them around. It sometimes I'll explain later when you're going along the panels. It's sometimes nice to have either a weight or a clamp to keep the upper panel from balancing up and down on the upstroke on the saw. Uh, and then also uh, around the ends here, I've got two little C-clamps really tightened down, one on each end and they're in areas where they're out of the way as far as uh, wastage goes. Uh, that Now that they've been matched up uh, size-wise and then lofting-wise, you want to maintain that relationship the whole time. And then uh, once I get a panel cut out, I will keep it clamped up until I finish uh, doing the, the edges and stuff so that you maintain that mirror image of each other. So let me go ahead and reset up and we'll cut out one of these panels and uh, we'll have some cuts along the way of some of these longer ones. Uh, and then we'll get into some trimming. We'll start with this little curved part up here. Getting close to the line, but not on it. Give yourself some uh, trimming room for bringing. We'll bring in the hand plane next. I also don't have the saw set up at very high RPM. This way. It cuts fine, but it gives me some delayed action so I can control it better than if it was zipping along at high speed. up the rest of it with a hand plane. Let me go ahead and, and get that and we'll come right back. This one's just a short length between, because between here and the very stern uh, end on this bottom keel section of the panel is a dead straight line. So there's little to have to do to that one. Okay, I got the little block plane out. And not a lot of blade is sticking. And it's a little low angle plane, so it does better on the end grain. And just take your time. I think I might call that good. Give it a good sight down to, and then make certain, be certain that you're square. That's good. Okay, we'll go ahead to uh, cutting some more panels here. Okay, probably the next. In order to save as much plywood as possible, I want to come across on the bow cut next. the other thing if I could talk to you before about having gaps in it. You can, you can uh, cut in between. So let me go ahead and reset up here. I put this pipe clamp here in line where one of the uh, vertical uh, 2 by 6s uh, on the A-frame underneath the uh, sawhorse part uh, so I don't cut through it. And I also uh, tweaked up the uh, 
the speed on this thing too. Again, stay away from the line and we'll come back to it with the hand plane or a rasp to mean depending where it's at. line is still underneath. Put our guide back up a little bit further. And off we go. I'm going to go ahead and then finish this out and um, I'll come back when we're doing some other thing. I mean just basically stay on the on the waist area between the two panels. Stay off maybe a sixteenth to an eighth depending on how good your eyesight and your saw and how good you can do it, and then we'll come back and either rasp it down or else uh, hand plane it down to our lofted uh, pencil line. So, okay, we got one panel set cut out. I've traded the two positions of the two panels so I'll have that nice arc on the outside and I can move it around. But first thing I want to do is, is trim off the end here. Is my elbow in the way? No. starting the curve going back that way and remember it's been reverse position we want to save this so this time we'll be cutting on that side of the line it also helps at, at some point to, to chop this little scrap piece off because it's going to be hanging around on the end but you want to try to save as much as you can because you never know when you might use that stuff for something to make some wooden clamps like I use or laminate up all kinds of different things out of the wood. I mean, it's good expensive plywood. You might as well save it in as big a pieces as you can. Okay, we're going to cut. Well, there we go. I've been out here probably about oh, 40 minutes doing this, so it doesn't take long. So let me uh, reset up for something else. Okay, I think I'm still in focus. I was having a hard time keeping the uh, auto going here. Where am I at? Okay. So I just pulled my plane down again. So just come up until the line is just barely ghosting on the edge. And with the grain along here, I should be going this direction. little guides that I use that the iron fits into and then I have my emery cloth here and I found that either my table saw or my band saw the table on it nice flat surface just lay this down fold the uh, emery cloth and then pull the iron back do it several times and then flip it over and lightly drag across the flat so you take a burr off the edge on the other side so it helps to have that sharp. So this panel is all sharp or um, shaped, bottom and top. Uh, we don't have to do anything it to other than, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. I want to bring the top one back and uh, so I still have to shape the inside of it. And it can be a problematic with using a small plane. Uh, probably not so much on this one because the arc is so flat, I'll be able to get into it. But on one of the boats where the whole panels has some arc to it, uh, the little plane tends to bridge over, you know, like two points. 
and he can't get in, so then I have to rely on a, a rasp. So let me go back, to, let's go back to the top panel and get that last curve uh, on the inside done, and then we can start beveling and marking out our locations for our drill holes and then for our uh, tape edges, the two and three inch tape that we'll put on the inside. And it uh, goes along pretty quick. I should be able to have this all done in uh, probably an hour and a half, and then that'll be it for this section. One thing I kept telling you, and especially on all the other ones on the, um, the upper edge here, we'll put little hacksaw marks in them uh, to mark them as to equal distance since they're matched up now uh, lengthwise, fore and aft, up and down, uh, by putting these marks in that when it, the hole is out, I'll have equal, I'll know exactly if I need to go three inches ahead of this station mark, that uh, I'll go a three inches ahead of the one on the other side and I'll know I'll be square up on the boat. So let me go ahead and put these in. It doesn't take much, just something right along on the station lines. Boxy fills them in later on. Here. On this boat I'm not certain how the uh, edges or the uh, deck tops are going to be yet, so. Well, every boat is a learning experience, and I forgot that because it's in there on the side I have to do is over here, and I have all my long boards on this side. Normally I work off the other side uh, with my longer boards and stuff, but because this thing is so long, I'm over here, so I had to put another some other 2x6s underneath to jack it up so I could get down to where I could uh, work on the uh, I can see there's a little bit of arc in there Smooth it out and then take it down. Let me get some gloves on so I don't bang my knuckles up. We'll come back when I get this done. It's pretty much a continuation of the same thing. Just take your plane or where you can't get to it with the plane on a rasp. I got uh, this one from Chuck down in Dutworks. It works pretty good for it. taking down wood quickly. So let me go ahead and uh, get my glove on. We'll come back when this is done. We have our panels cut out now. Uh, the edges have been, you know, all cut out. The edges have been trimmed down to our lofted lines. Uh, and they're still in their panel pairs, locked in tight, supported, weighted, so they can't take any wobbles or warp, depending on how soon you get back to it again. Uh, the next thing coming up will be marking out the uh, offsets for where we drill the holes, which will be about three eighths of an inch. Well, maybe a little low, lower than, closer than that. But I'll use, I'll go three eighths of an inch just to give myself some extra wood uh, to keep the wire from pulling through because this is a little, not quite up to the four or the six mil uh, standards uh, for toughness. So, and then we'll have that line for the holes. We drill a line for the edge of the uh, two inch glass and the line for the edge of the three inch glass. And then um, uh, bevel the edges on the insides that will uh, come together on the V parts. Uh, those edges will be beveled in order to make them line up better and also for the uh, gel magic to get in and to add a little more uh, uh, adhesion, you know, glue the things together. So we'll see that when we get to it. So we'll come back and we'll uh, do the edging and then we'll wire it up and we'll have a boat. Mm -hmm.